Okay, I am continuing to work through my own final exam for my algebra-based physics course. Hopefully you can find the other problems. We're on number four. A bowling ball of mass of four kilograms uh, and is, that's weird, and is released, you can tell I wrote this, right? <laughs> is released from rest a height of four meters above the ground, which is sand. So here's my ball. This is four kilograms. This is four meters, like that. When the ball hits the sound, it makes a crater that's 10 centimeters deep. So this is going to be afterwards. It's like this. And that is S equals 0 0.1 meters. What is the average force exerted on the ball during the collision with the sand? So in this case, we have to think, you know, there's clearly a force pushing. There's a force pulling down. And then there's a force pushing up and down, which are not equal, during the collision. And that upward pushing sand force, which I'm calling a normal force, is what slows the ball down. Uh, and I want to find that. So you could say, well, uh, maybe I could find out how fast the ball is moving right before it hits the ground, and then I could calculate the acceleration while it's colliding and calculate the force. That would work. But I don't care about time. I don't care about a lot of those things. So in this case, it would be better to use work equals a change in energy. System equals ball plus earth. If you use the work energy system principle, you have to say what your system is because that tells you what energies you have and what does work. So in this case, if I have the ball and the earth as a system, I can have kinetic energy of the ball and I can have a gravitational potential energy. Kinetic energy is one half mv squared and the gravitational potential energy is mgy. Of course, what that doesn't matter. What matters is the change, uh, but that's where I'm starting from. So if I pick this as my start and this is my end, I can say the work done, what forces would do work? Well, the only force that can do work is this normal force. So uh, work is F delta R cosine theta. So if it's moving this way but pushing that way, theta is going to be 180 degrees. So cosine of 180 is negative 1. So that means I'm going to get N, uh, I'm going to get S minus 1 times minus 1, right? So where S is the amount it moves, N is the force, which I don't know, it's what I'm trying to find. And the negative 1 is because the it's moving this way, but the ball's, uh, the ground's pushing up that way. And that's going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. Uh, so here is a really nice thing. What's my change in kinetic energy? Well, what's the speed up there? zero. What's the speed down there? Zero. Zero minus zero is zero. So now I just have the change in gravitational potential energy. It's going to be equal to uh, the, the, I can write this as the final potential u2 minus the initial potential u1. So let me call this, this the origin where it stops. So that means that the u2 is zero. So now I get negative n s equals negative m g and now what's the starting y value it's actually going to be s plus this four meters so i'm actually going to say uh 4.1 meters if you just did four it's not going to change your answer that much and i would accept it as correct even though it's technically not correct okay uh so now i can solve for n the negatives cancel i get n equals m g times 4.1 over s of 0 0.1 and let's just put this in my calculator i missed one step that's fine drop so the mass was four kilograms yep four kilograms 9.8 times 4.1 times 0.1 divided by and i get 1607.2 newtons and that's the average force um, because i assume that the force is constant when i calculate the work even though it's technically not. Well, it could, it could be. It could be. There you go.